Hi, it's Lori here again at Sew Right Sewing Machines. Um, and I wanted to share with you today the fact that not all bobbins are alike. Um, after working in this store for many years and uh, intaking and outtaking many machine repairs, um, I've discovered that a lot of people don't know that you can't use one type of bobbin in every machine. Each machine is developed and created with a specific bobbin in mind. Okay, so I want to take you through some of the bobbins that uh, we have and what fits in what machine, etc. Um, another thing that people do um, and aren't aware of is that they may not be putting their bobbin in correctly in the bobbin case. And then what happens is you get poor stitch quality. Um, and that really affects the wear and tear of a garment, the beauty of a quilt, or the longevity of a craft project that you might make. I wanted to show you the variety of bobbins that exist on the market. And this probably isn't even half of them. So to try to put one of these in a machine that really it doesn't belong into just doesn't make any sense. Um, we have one that has this metal coating. We have an industrial bobbin. We have several plastic bobbins, but they are not designed for every machine that takes a plastic bobbin. Um, another uh, thing we hear a lot of is that they prefer, people prefer a metal bobbin over a plastic. Both are very good bobbins. You don't want to put a metal bobbin in a machine that requires a plastic bobbin or vice versa, because it just won't um, perform as well as you would expect, okay? All of these bobbins also have different names or different heights. This is a pre-wound bobbin. People don't want to wind a bobbin necessarily, but the thread on this bobbin is designed for embroidery, not for uh, general purpose sewing. So again, your stitch quality and the longevity of your garment slash quilt might be affected by using a pre-wound bobbin. People also think that with the pre-wound bobbin, you can use a bobbin again. Um, and that's a misnomer because you can't. You have to throw away the bobbin once it's done. This is a class 15 bobbin. Um, these are color-coded bobbins made by Pfaff or by Viking. They are typically, in terms of the size, a Class L. So there are so many bobbins on the market, so putting the right bobbin in the machine is essential for proper stitch quality. Before we load the bobbin in the machine, you have to properly wind it first. So I want to show you kind of examples of a perfectly wound bobbin and bobbins that really don't make the cut. This bobbin here is perfectly wound. Um, and why I'm saying perfectly wound is because it's evenly wound on the spool itself and it's taut. I can't get my finger to poke through it at all. These are two examples of badly wound bobbins. The first one is wound decently. However, you'll notice on close-up that I've got two colors of thread on this bobbin. Um, some people think it's A-OK -okay to leave whatever remnants of thread that are on the bobbin left on the spool before they wind a second color. That affects your stitch quality, thread tension, etc. Because um, sometimes when customers come in for uh, intake on the machine, I see a rainbow or a zebra of different colors on the bobbins. Please remove the color that was initially on the bobbin before winding a new bobbin. I know it's a waste of thread, but you're going to ruin the quality of your project if you don't. This one, at first sight, looks like it's a decently wound bobbin, but on closer examination, you'll see it's unevenly wound on the spool and it's very spongy. If I can get my finger in it and poke it, that is not a good bobbin. It's gonna not flow off that bobbin smoothly as it feeds through the machine, so I would recommend rewinding that bobbin. Now you're, you're gonna think, my God, that's a whole bunch of thread that I'm gonna waste. You can put the poorly wound bobbin on your spool holder and pretend it's a unit of thread and then put a new bobbin in your bobbin winding area and wind off the bad thread onto your new bobbin. Okay, so that way you will save um, some of your thread that you are worried about losing because of the badly wound bobbin. All right. <laughs>
I am going to now show you several types of machines. Um, the first type here, this pace setter, is what we consider a top load machine. What I mean by top load is that the bobbin is loaded on the top of the bed of the machine. And in most top load machines, you'll find a plastic bobbin. And what you'll also find is that the bobbin thread has to come off the left hand side when you load it onto your machine. So if we can envision this as an alphabet, this looks like the letter P. And I tell a lot of customers, P means perfect, just so that they remember not to have it in wrong. If this is turned the other way and the thread is coming off the right hand side, that is not loading the machine properly. It has to load from the left and it's going pretty much, I believe it's a counterclockwise direction. So remember P for perfect, but if you forget, how could you forget though, is a lot of the newer machines have a little reference chart near the bobbin area telling you in what direction to place your bobbin and which way the thread should spool off. So I'm gonna follow the picture and my P for perfect. I'm gonna stick it in the machine and I'm gonna follow the thread path as directed here. And I can cut my thread here, but as a quilter, sometimes I like to bring my bobbin thread up so that it's where it should be seated when I sew. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll take my needle up down button, go up, go down, find my little loop, and then I'm gonna pull my loop up through that bobbin area, all right? Cause that's where it should sit. Once that's done, I'm gonna shut the door. A lot of people like to hold both the upper thread and the lower thread as a tail so they don't get a little loop as they begin to sew. Then I release as I sew and let go and we're ready to go. So that's basically a top load bobbin. I want to show you how to properly wind a bobbin so it will work well with your machine. So the first thing I'm gonna do is follow the manufacturer's directions. Oftentimes in the newer models, you'll see directions neatly laid on the top. Usually they have directions for the upper threading and directions for the lower threading. On this particular machine, the solid lines denote the upper thread threading area and the dotted line denotes the bobbin winding area. So I'm just gonna follow that. One, go underneath you, turn around says hang to the right, so I'm gonna go right. I like to hold my thread taut just so I make sure I have proper tension, then up and around this stem, around this button, and then over to the right where my bobbin winding mechanism is. Now, a lot of times they just say, just wrap it around, but a lot of these plastic bobbins have holes in them. So if I have luck, I'm gonna properly wind it. There are these holes here through the inside of the hole and up through the top. Here we go. So now I have it here. I am now going to place it firmly onto that stem, okay? I am then going to take my bobbin winder and press it over here and then I'm going to start winding. But before I wind, I'm gonna check my presser foot. You never wanna have your presser foot down. It's raised up now, you can tell by this light here. Because if you do that, it closes the tensions here and you're going to get a very tight wind. So tight that on occasion, we've seen as customers have come in the store, broken bobbins because it was too tight or what we call choked problems, when the thread is just so tightly wound, it won't unspool properly when you sew, all right? So I'm gonna make sure my presser foot is up. And then I'm going to begin to wind. And as you see, it's winding nicely now. I don't have an issue with it being spongy. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna cut my upper thread here so that way it won't get caught up in the spool. So I'm gonna find some scissors. Now, I am, now I'm going to cut the thread. When I step on the gas, I don't like necessarily gunning it because I like to have control. I'd like to be able to stop and start when I want to. So moderate, mid to moderate speed. Also, I don't want thread breakage to occur because if it's winding or unspooling too fast, there may be a tendency for the thread to break. 
I want to make sure it's evenly wound and properly wound. Now, also, I have control when I want to stop winding the bobbin. Say that I have half of a project done and I only need half the bobbin wound, I'll stop right there and cut. Um, you can wind till the end and that way you'll have a full bobbin for the next time of use. So let's say um, I, I'm done. I'm going to then push it over some of the handy dandy thread cutters on these newer machines and I'm ready to go. And then given the position of the bobbin, again, P for perfect or P for proper placement, I'm gonna put this in here and follow the thread path and I'm ready to go. Here is an example of a front load machine. I sound like I'm talking about washing machines, but here we are with the door or the bobbin door in the front of the machine. So a number of models have this type of loading mechanism. So if we open the door, you'll see the bobbin case is on an up angle and the bobbin case is this and the bobbin rests in the bobbin case, all right? This is a metal bobbin and the metal bobbin goes in the front load machine and normally it sits inside a bobbin case. And this unspools differently than the top load bobbin in that you want the thread to come off on the other side. So it forms like a letter Q. You can't put it in that way. That is the improper way of loading that bobbin in the bobbin case. You want it to come off on this side. So, and what do I mean by that side? I mean, when you load it in the case, you want the Q visible. So you want the Q to be like that. So I can see the Q as I load it in there, all right? Now I have to put it through a number of apparatus to get it to get in there. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna go up and around and click in, okay? So now it's seated in there properly. Now I'm gonna load it into the machine. So with this machine, there's like a, a little finger up there. So the, the latch of the case is parallel to the table. See the latch? And that little finger is up kind of in like the 12 o'clock, one o'clock, 12 o'clock position. And I'm gonna just seat it in. You hear the snap. Now it's properly loaded. If you don't hear a snap and it can wiggle around, you don't have it loaded properly in the bobbin area. All right. You have the option of cutting the thread again with this thread cutter. I like to leave a little tail because I like to see it come out in that area when I begin to sew. So just to illustrate that again, I'm going to do the same thing that I did in the other machine. I'm going to put needle down. This one I'm going to use my hand crank. I'm going to turn my hand wheel forward. One revolution. I'm going to the pick up my foot. Again, I see the loop and then I'm going to pull that loop out of that area. And now I have my bobbin thread and my upper thread, my two tails in place and I shut the door. I am now going to wind the bobbin for this front load machine. Again, I'm first things first, I want to make sure that my Presser foot is not down on the bed of the machine. I want to make sure it's raised because I don't want too tight of a bobbin. And I don't want the thread to choke the bobbin. All right. This machine's a little different than the other one in that the bobbin winding is a little bit easier. I'm just following this path around this button. And then I'm putting this bobbin, no need to thread it, around. I'm following, again, the directions of the arrow. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to push this mechanism towards the bobbin. I don't need to operate my foot pedal here. I can stop the bobbin winding mechanism by simply moving this lever to the right if I don't want a full bobbin. Pick up the bobbin. And what's nice is I've got a handy dandy thread cutter built into the top. So I'm just going to do that. And now my bobbin is complete and it's nicely wound. Remember when we're loading the uh, front load machine, we want the bobbin thread to come off the right hand side or the letter Q. Thank you for watching my do's and don'ts about bobbins. 
If you have any questions about bobbins, you can always call us at Sew Right Sewing Machines, 718-468-5858, or reach out to us at info at sewright.com, um, and that way we can answer any questions you have. Thank you.